Well, hello, Python friends on YouTube. Welcome to another Python web scraping tutorial. And it should be number nine. Me and my forgetting skills. So today we are going to round up our uh, uh, <coughs> series in this tutorial uh, series on beautiful soup. And today we are going to talk a little bit about a lambda expression just a very very quick intro and this is going to be a very short video as well so just <clears throat> to mention on accessing attributes uh, so far we have looked at, at how to access and filter tags and access content with them within them uh, however very often in web scraping you're not looking for the content of a tag you're looking for its attributes this becomes especially useful for tags such as an a tag where the URL it is pointing to is contained uh, within the href uh, attribute or the image tag where the target image is contained within the uh, source attribute as src attribute. So with tag objects, a Python list of attributes can be automatically accessed by calling my tag dot attrs attributes so keep in mind that this literally returns a python dictionary object which makes retrieval and manipulation of these attributes attributes trivial the source location for an image for example can be found uh, using my my image tag dot attrs and then in brackets you specified the the attribute that you want so that is just a short on accessing attributes and now let's go to lambda expressions and how it's relevant in web scraping so if you have a formal education in computer science you probably learned about lambda expressions uh, once in school and then never use them again if you don't they might be unfamiliar to you or familiar only as that thing i've been meaning to learn at some point so in this video we won't go deeply into these types of functions but we will look at how they can be useful in web scraping essentially a lambda expression is a function that is passed into another function as a variable that is instead of defining a function where is f is the function and then you have x y as the variables you may define a function as f uh, and in brackets g uh, brackets x and then y where the first the g uh, x is is the function or f g x as a function and h x as a function so beautiful soup allows us to pass certain types of functions as parameters into the find all function the only restriction is that these functions must take a tag object as an argument and return a boolean. Every tag object that beautiful soup encounters is evaluated in this function and tags that evaluate to true are returned while the rest are discarded. For example, the next line soup.findall and then lambda tag and len uh, len tag attributes equal to two that means uh, it retrieves all tags that have exactly two attributes and the result would be finding tags such as the following lines here where the where the attribute attribute count is uh, sorry the length of the attribute uh, is equal to two length of the tag attribute is uh, equal to 2 so using lambda functions in beautiful soups beautiful soup selectors can act as a great substitute for writing a regular regular expression so if you're of course if you are comfortable with writing a little code and to round up this uh, series about beautiful soup uh, Although beautiful soup is used throughout this uh, this tutorial and it's one of the most popular HTML libraries available for Python. Keep in mind that it's not the only option. If beautiful soup does not meet your needs, check out these other widely used 
uh, use libraries. The first one is LXML, and you can find it at lxml.de. This library is used for parsing both HTML and XML documents and is known for being very low level and heavily based on C language. Although it takes a while to learn, it has a steep learning curve and it actually means you learn it very fast. And it is very fast at parsing most HTML documents. And the next library is the HTML parser. And this is a Python, Python's built-in parsing library. And because it requires no installation, other than obviously having Python installed in the first place, it can be extremely convenient to use. So this concludes uh, this part uh, of Beautiful Soup coverage. So in the next videos, we are going to delve a little bit deeper on, on um, crawling a domain or a, a full site. So thank you so much for watching. And if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share or comment in any way you like. And I hope you see you, hope to see you in the next video. Okay, bye.